Well, another Ryzen launch happened this past week, so naturally, I had to buy an APU and test it out for you guys. Today we are focusing on the Ryzen 5 3400G, which is equipped with 4 cores and 8 threads, a base clock of 3.7GHz, and a boost of 4.2, with the graphics being provided by 11 Vega cores running at 1400MHz, which is up from the 1250MHz of the 2400G. The 3400G is really an evolution of the 2400G, and not so much a revolution. Like the 2400G, which, while being branded as a 2000 series chip, was based on the first generation 14 nanometer Zen architecture, the 3400G is based on the 12 nanometer Zen Plus architecture, not the new 7 nanometer Zen 2 architecture that is in all of the 3000 series Ryzen chips that are above this in the product stack. It is what it is. Regardless, there are some improvements under the hood, such as the IHS, or the Integrated Heat Spreader, like this bit right here, being soldered to the CPU die instead of using a thermal paste. This improves thermal conductivity, which leads to cooler temperatures. Anyway, we're going to put this new APU through its paces, and we're going to see if it's actually a viable option as an all-in-one gaming chip. I found that most people using these processors don't focus a whole lot on the memory speeds and timing, and instead just set the memory to 3000 MHz or so with pretty loose timings and call it a day. That's fine, because it represents what most owners of these APUs will do, but I wanted to see what could be accomplished if you push things a little further. How will we do that? Enter this, my G-Skill Trident Z kit that is equipped with Samsung b die memory and is rated for 3600 MHz with a cast latency of 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. In modern English, it's fire. If there is a flaw with this kit of memory, it's that it's, uh, expensive. I paid about as much for this 16 gig kit used as I did for the brand new Ryzen 5 3400G. So it's not for everyone, but it's the right tool for the job today. Our build is of the Mini ITX variety, with the case being an NWIN BQ656T with the 120 watt power supply. More on that later. I tried to make the case look a little more fun by adding some carbon fiber vinyl to the glossy plastic in the front, along with painting the inside of the case and the power supply black. The motherboard is a Gigabyte 8350N gaming Wi-Fi that's obviously updated to the latest BIOS revision. As far as storage, we have a 1TB SATABase SSD where everything is installed. For cooling, instead of using the included Wraith Spire, we're actually going to be using a Wraith Stealth Cooler with the Shroud Remove, which barely fits inside of this case. As far as overclocking, I left the CPU and GPU alone and only tweaked the memory. Speaking of which, I wasn't able to get the full 1600 MHz to post, even with the memory at like 1.45 volts. So I backed down the clock speed and voltage to 3400 MHz and 1.35 volts respectively. With latency, I didn't have the time or patience to go through every primary, secondary, and tertiary timing, um, making a small change and validating it for hours. So I went with some pretty mild adjustments that still gave some pretty awesome results. As a side note, I believe uh, that there is a ton of extra performance waiting to be unlocked with some extra tweaks to just the memory speed and timing, like to the tune of 10 or 15% or maybe even more. If you're wondering or doubting how much this APU is starved of memory bandwidth, here's a quick fire strike run at the stock 2133 MHz memory speed versus 3400 MHz with Titan timings. And just like that, we got a 24% increase in the graphics score, just with memory. That's crazy! And if you have more knowledge than I do with memory overclocking, I honestly believe you could increase that to 30 something percent. It's nuts. On Cinebench R15, going from stock to overclocked memory, we see our score go from 720 to 855 points. That's a 19% improvement in CPU power, which actually makes it faster than an i7-4770K. Not bad for $150. Anyways, you came here to see how this thing performs in games. So settle in for some benchmarks.
you know, this little APU is actually a viable 1080p gaming chip. That's honestly kind of incredible that we can get an i7 4770K performance with like a GTX 1050 Ti out of a $149 CPU. You may be wondering why I didn't include Apex Legends in this list. Well, I tried, but you know the 120 watt power supply that this case has? It turns out that's fine for every other game I tested, but it's not enough when trying to run Apex. To make sure this power theory was correct, I plugged the computer into my kilowatt meter and found that when I loaded into the Apex menu, it would race to like 150 something watts and then the PC would just shut down. Now, this computer isn't actually drawing 150 watts, but assuming that the power supply is about 80% efficient, 80% 80 of 150 is 120, so that makes sense that it just kind of ran out of steam. It hit the 120 watts and the power supply shut down to protect itself. Makes sense. But if you want me to pick up a 150 watt power supply and try my hand at more aggressive memory overclocks, let me know and I'll try and make that happen. TLDR, this APU is awesome, and if you plan on picking up one strictly for gaming, I would highly recommend getting the fastest, lowest latency memory you can afford. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you have any questions, comments, or things you'd like to see in future videos. This video probably took around 20 hours in total to make, so if you could leave a like and hit that subscribe button to see my intermittent, but very much cared for uploads, that would be really awesome. Thanks, and have a great day.